In this video segment, we're going to look at the very important process technique of how to write a balanced nuclear equation for either a radioactive decay reaction or a nuclear bombardment. The key idea for, e for any type of balanced nuclear equation that you write, key idea is that the total of the mass numbers and the atomic numbers must equal on the reactant and product side of the nuclear equation. Let's take a look at radioactive decay reactions first. Here's the hallmark, here's the pattern. If it is a radioactive decay, you have a single reactant, which is a radioisotope, an unstable nucleus, and it spontaneously undergoes a nuclear rearrangement. It emits radiation in this process as a product and converts into a new isotope. So let's take a look at one type of radioactive decay known as alpha decay. In this nuclear process, an unstable nucleus emits an alpha particle, which is a type of radiation. And recall, we looked at how to note what an alpha particle is, its proper symbol or notation. It is a helium nucleus. So you can use the symbol for helium with a mass number of four and, at and an atomic number of two. That's what an alpha particle is, a positively charged helium nucleus missing the two electrons. Or you could also symbolize an alpha particle using the Greek letter alpha instead of the helium symbol. Either notation is accurate. So let's take a look at an example of a radioisotope that undergoes decay by alpha particle emission. There are several different types of radioisotopes that do this. They tend to be heavier, larger radioisotopes if they're emitting alpha particles. One radioisotope that undergoes alpha decay is uranium-238. And of course, your periodic table, if you have it available, would show you that uranium has an atomic number of 92. So even if I omitted the 92 atomic number, your periodic table would give you that information. So, this uranium-238 radioisotope spontaneously undergoes a change. It is the only reactant on the left side of the arrow. When it undergoes rearrangement, the nucleus throws off, emits an alpha particle. Once the nucleus emits an alpha particle, it's different. It no longer has the same composition, so we have a new identity of an atom produced. And how do we figure out what that new isotope is? And we're going to use this key idea that the total of the mass numbers and the atomic numbers have to balance, have to be equal on both sides. Well, the total mass number on the reactant side is 238. That's it. On the product side, we have a mass number of 4 for the alpha particle. That means whatever the new isotope is, it must have a mass number of 234. And let's write that a little more clearly. 234 plus 4 equals 238. What is the atomic number of our new isotope? Because if we know the atomic number, we know the identity. Atomic numbers also have to balance be equal on both sides of the arrow. So I have an atomic number of 92 on the reactant side. Product side has an atomic number of 2 with the alpha particle. I see that I am going to have to have an atomic number of 90 for my new isotope so that 90 plus 2 equals 92. So double checking and giving myself a little bit more room here to write, double checking the count, 238 for the mass number on the reactant side, and 234 plus 4 equals 238. 
So I balance the mass number, atomic numbers, 90 plus 2 on the product side equals 92 on the reactant side. So I have balanced my mass numbers and atomic numbers. As soon as I know that the atomic number of this isotope is 90, I can look at the periodic table and see that the chemical symbol for the element with an atomic number of 90 is TH. And TH stands for the element or is the symbol for the element thorium. So thorium-234 is our new isotope that is produced by the alpha decay of uranium-238. Let's take a look at another type of decay process, and that is beta decay. With beta decay, we have an unstable nucleus spontaneously emitting a beta particle out of the nucleus. And the notation, of course, we looked at this previously for a beta particle. They are electrons. And you can use the symbol for an electron, E, with a mass number of zero. It's not a proton or a neutron. And, a, and an atomic number of minus one, since it has an opposite charge to that of a proton. So you, you either use the symbol for the electron, E, or the Greek letter B, beta. Greek letter beta, second letter of the Greek alphabet. Notice that in this beta decay process, a little more information about what's happening in the nucleus. You have too many neutrons relative to protons in the nucleus. So the nucleus is unstable. Therefore, a neutron in the nucleus releases, throws out an electron, a beta particle, and converts into a proton, which remains inside the nucleus. So you drop the neutron count by one and increase the proton count by one by beta decay. Here's an example of a radioisotope that undergoes beta decay or beta emission. Carbon-14 is a beta emitter. And by the way, there's no way that at this particular point you would be expected to know that carbon-14 is a beta emitter. That information would need to be told to you. But if you were told that carbon-14 is a beta emitter, you should be able to write the balanced equation for it. So here is our single reactant, our carbon-14 radioisotope, all by itself spontaneously it undergoes nuclear rearrangement it emits a beta particle from its nucleus produced or coming from a neutron that converts into a proton so how do we predict what the new isotope is we use this key principle mass numbers and atomic numbers have to balance well if i have a mass number of 14 on the reactant side and a beta particle has a mass number of zero, then clearly my new isotope would have to have a mass number of 14 in order to be balanced product side with reactant side. Be careful here with the atomic number balancing. I have a six for the atomic number for carbon 14 on the reactant side, but this is a negative sign here a very common error, and this would be an error, would be to put a five here. Five plus a minus one is not six. So pay attention to that negative sign. Instead, we need to have a seven for the atomic number of the new isotope. A seven added to a minus one is six. And our periodic table will now identify this isotope once we know that the atomic number, the number of protons, is 7. That determines the identity of the element. And the periodic table is saying that this is a nitrogen-14 isotope that is produced in this beta decay process. So nitrogen-14. 
14 is our new isotope produced, stable isotope, I might add, produced from the beta decay of radioactive carbon-14. Let's take a look at another type of radioactive decay, and this is positron emission. Positron emission is not as commonly observed among radioisotopes compared to alpha decay or beta decay. So positron emission, not as common. And let's take a look at what's happening with positron emission. An unstable nucleus emits a positron particle, which you recall is an electron-like particle, much smaller in mass compared to a proton or a neutron, but a positive charge, not a negative charge like an electron. So positrons can be symbolized with the electron symbol, but mass number zero, and most importantly, that atomic number is plus one because a positron has a positive one charge like a proton. You can also symbolize a positron using the Greek letter beta. So what's happening with positron emission is that a proton in the nucleus releases a positron, which is thrown off, and the proton converts into a neutron that remains in the nucleus. So this type of decay is observed with radioisotopes that have too many protons relative to neutrons in their nucleus. Aluminum-24 is a positron emitter. Its nucleus will spontaneously rearrange and release, emit a positron, which is thrown off into space. And we now have a new isotope that will be produced by this rearrangement. Using the balancing of mass numbers and atomic numbers, if we have a mass number of 24 on the reactant side, then we clearly need to have a mass number of 24 for our new isotope. 24 plus 0 equals 24 on the reactant side. Atomic number of 13 on the reactant side looks to me like we have an atomic number of 12 for our new isotope, 12 plus 1 equals 13. And as soon as I know that the atomic number is 12, I can look on the periodic table and identify this as an isotope of magnesium. Magnesium 24 is our new isotope that is produced. We're now going to transition to our second type of nuclear equation that we'd like to look at writing and that is nuclear bombardment equations. Notice that nuclear bombardment is a way of producing a new radioisotope by bombarding a stable nucleus with high-speed radiation, which converts stable nuclei into radioactive ones or into radioisotopes. And this is a standard way of generating the radioisotopes that are needed for healthcare, either for diagnostic purposes or for therapeutic purposes, either to understand a disease process by trying to diagnose it or to treat it using radioisotopes in a medical therapy process. So an example, we can take boron-10, which is a stable nucleus, and you can bombard it with alpha particles. If you take boron-10 and bombard it with alpha particles, you produce a new unstable radioisotope as well as a single individual neutron as a product. So write the balanced nuclear equation for this. So we have as our reactants boron-10, which is a stable isotope and we're going to bombard it with alpha particles. So notice nuclear bombardment has two reactants. N unlike 
radioactive decay, which only has a single reactant on the left side of the arrow. Bombardment will have two reactants, a stable nucleus and then a bombarding radiation particle. In this instance, alpha particles. Product side will have our single neutron. So I'm giving the symbol for a neutron particle. And now we are producing a new unstable radioisotope. What, what is its identity? Well, we're going to use that balancing of mass numbers and atomic numbers to figure it out. I see that I have a total mass number of 14 on the reactant side. 10 plus 4 is 14. My neutron has a mass number of 1, so some really quick math here. Addition tells me that I should have a mass number of 13 for the new unstable isotope because 13 plus 1 equals 14, the sum of the mass numbers on the reactant side. Doing the same sort of reasoning with atomic numbers, 5 plus 2, adding atomic numbers on the reactant side gives us 7. Product side, a neutron has an atomic number of 0. That means the new radioisotope needs to have an atomic number of 7. 7 plus 0 is 7, balancing with a total atomic number of 7 on the reactant side. And as soon as I know that my atomic number is 7, I can look at the periodic table and see that this is an isotope of nitrogen, nitrogen 13, which is not a stable isotope of nitrogen. Nitrogen 14 is stable, but nitrogen 13 is radioactive. It is a radioisotope, not stable.